what's up, Anchor? I uh, hope you're having a good day. I have something in my hands. This is actually my Bible. And uh, something that I don't know if you've noticed, maybe you have, maybe you haven't, but there are words in here that are black and red. Now, maybe your Bible is similar to that. Maybe you don't have that in your Bible. But what this means is any of the words that are in red are words that Jesus spoke, right? If they're in black, then they're not um, words that Jesus spoke. And so to me, I think that's super cool. And maybe you do as well. But maybe you're tempted to think that, man, the, the red words must be more important than the black words. And, and I understand what, what you're saying behind that, right? These are the things that Jesus said. And that, I guess, would be more important than what Moses said or Daniel said or, you know, maybe Paul said. But really what I want to do as we begin this new series is I want to encourage you, right? If you remember 2 Timothy 3.16, Right? It says that all scripture is God-breathed and is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness so that the man of God may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. And so before we get into this and we start trying to divide red words and black words and ultimately dividing scripture in what we think would be a higher level of importance, uh, I want to make sure that we don't do that. But what I do want to do in this series is talk about things that Jesus said. And the series is actually called Things Jesus Never Said, right? Here, here's the deal. To, to understand more of what he said, maybe we should look at some of the things he didn't say. And, and so today, we're going to be talking about something very important, uh, what Jesus didn't say on the topic of forgiveness, all right? And, and I know forgiveness is, is challenging, it's hard, but we're going to go through it. So, so think right now off the top of your head, who is somebody that you know that's really annoying? Like really annoying. Maybe it's a sibling. Maybe it is somebody online. Um, maybe it is, you know, someone, who knows, uh, wherever in your, your life, your sphere of influence. Uh, chances are, if you don't have someone in mind right now, then you might actually be the really annoying person. I'm just kidding. Just kidding, <laughs> kind of. But no, seriously, just kidding. Uh, here, here's what I want you to think about. Jesus never said things like this. He, he never said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they post. Right? He never said that. He, he never said, sorry, you've sinned too much. I, I can forgive everyone else, but I just can't forgive you because you really get on my nerves. Those are things that Jesus never said. And, and for me personally, I'm so excited that, that Jesus has freely forgiven my sin and that he's freely forgiven your sin as well. And so as we dive into this topic of forgiveness, I just want you to go with me. Okay, where we're going to go is we're going to go to the Sermon on the Mount. And we're going to look at something in the middle of it, right? This incredible sermon that Jesus gives. And he shares with us uh, in Matthew chapter 6, he shares with us kind of how we should be praying. And in doing so, sheds a lot of light on this, this issue of forgiveness. Okay, here's, here's what he says. Uh, Matthew chapter 6, uh, we're going to start in verse 9. He says, this then is how you should pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. And then right there in verse 12, he doesn't say, forgive us as we continue to hold grudges. Or, you know, something along the lines of, I can forgive you, but I just can't forgive other people. This is what he says in verse 12. Forgive us our debts as we also have forgiven our debtors, right? And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. And so what, what I want to do is just kind of unpack that a little bit. Because at the end of this prayer, Jesus goes a step further. He says this in verse 14. For if you forgive men what they, when they sin against you, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive men their sins, your Father will not forgive your sins. And so just as we start, this creates a lot of emotion, right? Talking about just the topic, the word forgiveness, the topic of forgiveness, of do I have to forgive? Why should I forgive? Are you sure about them? There's a lot of different emotions, and I get it. I don't know exactly what's going on in your life. I don't know maybe some of the things that create this issue around forgiveness. Maybe it was a boyfriend or a girlfriend that, that cheated. Maybe it was a, a best friend that, that lied. Maybe it was someone that you look up to that, that let you down or, or a loved one that, that wasn't there for you. They, they didn't come through for you, right? Somebody broke a promise. I don't know what it is, but, 
but I understand that. And then I think also that, you know, a lot of times there, there are some things that are so challenging when it comes to forgiveness. Some things that have happened, some things that are absolutely awful. Some things that you still carry a lot of burden and a lot of pain with today that you don't want to talk about, you don't want to think about, right? It's hard to process through. And, and I never want to downplay what you're going through, either now or in the past, or, or some of these truly awful, incredibly awful things that maybe you're carrying with you. I don't want to downplay your pain, and I know that God doesn't want to either. And so that's why I want us to just kind of work through some of this idea of forgiveness and what Jesus didn't say, right? So as we work through this, we come to this huge question, this question of how in the world do you forgive something that seems unforgivable, right? How do you forgive something that seems unforgivable? And I think there's a clue in the beginning of this passage that we started to read today. Let's go back to Matthew chapter 6, uh, verse 9, right? This then is how you should pray. Jesus says, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, right? Our Father in heaven. I think that the Our Father is a big deal. Jesus didn't say my Father. He said our Father. Our Father in heaven. And here's what I want us to understand. I want us to understand that our relationships with God's children, right? God's other children deeply matter to God. Our relationships with God's other children deeply matter to God. And as a dad, I'm a dad, this, this makes perfect sense to me. The, the relationships that my boys have with one another are a big deal to me. And I try to tell them how important they are, that these are relationships they're going to have for the rest of their lives, right? To take care of each other, take care of those relationships. And my boys, if you know them, they are the best of friends and they are the worst of enemies. And I think when they're, when they're fighting, there is this huge sadness. Honestly, frustration a lot of times that comes with it. But there's this huge sadness within me just because my boys are fighting with each other. But then on the flip side, right, when, when they're showing love to one another, when, when they're looking out for one another, there is this great happiness when, when they're getting along with each other. And, and I wonder if this isn't God's heart as well, that this isn't true for God as well. And, and maybe that's why Jesus said something in, in Matthew chapter 5. If we go back a chapter to verse 23, Jesus says this. He says, Therefore, if you're offering your gift at the altar, and there remember that your brother has something against you, leave your gift there in front of the altar. First go and be reconciled to your brother. Then come and offer your gift. Right? It's almost as if Jesus is saying, okay, so you're getting ready to worship God, but you realize that, that there's this tension, there's this issue, there's this unforgiveness between you and one of God's other children. He says, go take care of that. Go reconcile that before you come to God with your worship. Right? I, I think it's a, a really big deal. And, and here's, here's the kicker with, with unforgiveness. It will eat away at you. It will eat away at every aspect of your life. And, and you're going to become bitter and you're going to in turn start to resent that other person. Right? And here's something I've learned over the years. And I don't say this flippantly. But I've really had to process and learn that bitterness is a choice. It's a choice that I'm making to, to continue to hold that grudge, to continue to be bitter. And so I know that it's going to be a process as we work through this idea of forgiveness. But, but Jesus never said that you don't have to forgive them. You don't have to forgive that person. And so I want to encourage you to take it to God, right? Take it to God. And, and maybe you're saying, you know what, I'm, I'm just not there. I'm not there yet. I'm still super mad. But let's just say for a second that, you know, okay, I, I, I would do it. I'll, I'll go ahead and I'll take a step toward this. But what do I do? What, what do I even do? Where do I even start? Well, well, in Matthew chapter 5, in this same sermon, Jesus says this. He says, you've heard, right, Matthew chapter 5, verses 43 and 44. You have heard that it was said, love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I tell you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. Right? That's what Jesus tells us to do. Pray for those who persecute you. And this is, this is a big deal. This is huge because oftentimes we don't want to do that. We're not even close to that. 
We don't want to pray for someone who has hurt us or, or is persecuting us. And so we were like, well, you know what, maybe if I get around to it, I'll, I'll wait until I'm ready. Well, here's the kicker. If you wait until you're ready, you're never going to be ready. You're never going to be ready to pray for that person who's hurt you, to pray for that person uh, who is persecuting you. But, but here's what I know. I know that as you begin to pray for them, your heart will begin to soften, right? Your heart will begin to soften and it will begin to change. And so praying for them is a really big deal. And here's what I want you to know if you're taking notes. Your, your prayer may or may not change them, but it will change you. Your prayer for them may or may not change them, but it will change you. It always changes you. It will change you. Okay, and so I think that that's a very important thing when it comes to forgiveness. And so let's say that you go and, you know, you're like, all right, I'm going to begin to try this. I'm going to pray for my enemies. I'm going to pray for people that persecute me. Okay, but but how? How is this whole forgiveness thing going to work out? What's this forgiveness thing going to look like? All right, and so what I want to do is I want to go to Colossians chapter 3. Right, in Colossians chapter 3, this is written by Paul, and uh, in verse 13, this, this is what um, Paul says, okay, verse 13, says, bear with each other and forgive whatever grievances you may have against one another, right? Bear with each other, forgive any grievances that you may have with one another. Forgive as the Lord forgave you. Think about that for a second. Forgive as the Lord forgave you. A few simple words, but they're so powerful. See, when it when it comes to forgiveness, right, the forgiveness that we've gotten from the Lord, we don't deserve it, right? We didn't do anything to earn it. And so if Paul tells us to forgive as we've been forgiven, well, then they, they don't have to deserve it. They don't have to have earned it. We don't deserve it, and we didn't earn it. And so therefore, I know that I can step toward forgiveness knowing that that person doesn't deserve it and they definitely haven't earned it. But I'm thankful that God's forgiven me even though I haven't earned that, even though I don't deserve that because that's something I could never earn. That's something I could never deserve, right? And that, that's exactly what Paul's point is. And, and, and so think about how many relationships could be healed or could be mended when it comes to forgiveness, right? The friendships that, that could be in a better place. The relationships with your family that could be healed, right? So many different relationships with other people uh, could be better if we were to begin to practice forgiveness. And, and so Jesus never said that we don't have to forgive them. In fact, he said the exact opposite. Forgive as you have been forgiven. And so as we go through this series, that's exactly what we're going to be doing, is looking at things Jesus never said. So just to close, Matthew 6 uh, 14 and 15, if you forgive men when they sin against you, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive men their sins, your Father will not forgive your sins. Right? And here's the kicker. God's not being mean when he's, when he's asking us, when he's telling us, when he's commanding us to forgive others. Right? We, we know what? That, that forgiveness uh, it empowers you to really set the prisoner free. Right? But what we don't realize is that we're actually the prisoner. And so I want to challenge you, I want to encourage you to take some steps toward forgiveness this week because it's something that we've been called to do. Let me pray for us. God, thank you for an opportunity to, to work through, to wrestle with the topic of forgiveness. God, I thank you that you have freely forgiven me, that you've freely forgiven anyone who might be watching this on the other end. God, that Jesus has paid the price for us. And we, we think about some of this stuff with, man, I, I don't want to forgive. They've hurt me. Someone has to pay for this. And, and I'm reminded that someone did. Someone paid for all of my sin. Someone paid for everyone else's sin. And, and that's you, Jesus. And so I thank you for that today. God, I ask that, that each one of us would take a step toward representing you well in, in, in stepping toward forgiveness. You never said that we don't have to forgive them, but rather you said to forgive as we've been forgiven. And so that's what we want to do this week. It's in your name we pray, Jesus. Amen. Thank you guys so much for being with us. Have a great week.